the number 20 overall pick was one of the picks in my mock draft I actually got right. I didn't see a lot of people uh, projecting this pick, but Clavon Chase on, and I think he's a dog. And I think especially coming into this new defensive scheme that the Jaguars are intending to run in uh, 2020, I think he's going to be a big part of the defense, maybe even bigger than C.J. Henderson. Uh, what do you think, Jason? I think we could have gotten him in the second round. Personally, I think that he would have been there in the second round. Um, we could have maybe even traded up for him, but I think the Colts were like, you know, like sniping us, it's like hardcore. Like there was teams sniping us left and right, like just draft or trading up to draft the players that we wanted to draft. But at 20, I don't really, I don't really mind it. Honestly, I'm a huge LSU guy. I love LSU. I've loved LSU since 2007. I love Clavion Chase on. I love him. I love, love, love him. And if we're not going to, if, if there's there's two parts of the spectrum that we can speak on right now, whether Yannick Ngakwe is going to come back, whether he's not. If Ngakwe doesn't come back, Clavion slips right in there in his role and I think produces maybe not at the very same level as Yannick did in his first year, but I think he's going to have similar stats his first year than he did in his college in his last year. Five and a half, six sacks, I'm, I'm projecting for him to be if he's a starter and plays over 900 snaps. But personally, I like Clavion. I loved him when he was a college he's a dog he can do he can drop back in pass coverage he can rush the passer he can do whatever you need to do I don't I think his weaknesses are stopping the run because he is so small he plays like a, a like an outside he's obviously an outside linebacker and that's how they played him at LSU they barely played him in, in, in you know three technique and a four technique but being being that small it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna have him he's gonna he has a strength to get around the edge to sack the quarterback and that's what we're really looking for because when you look at unique and Gokwe I think people don't want to pay him because he can't stop the run that well but you don't pay people hundreds of millions of dollars to stop the run. You pay them to sack the quarterback. That is what you are. That, that that's all we need you to do. All we need you to do is sack the quarterback. We have we have we're gonna have decent, you know, you know, run blocking or uh, run defense this year. I feel like, but with playing on chase on, he's. I just want him to sack the quarterback. That's all. That's all I need to do. If he stops the run occasionally, great. But love Flavio. I think it's going to be exciting, you know, having him around, and especially with the whole Yannick and Gakwe situation. That's clearly. Uh, going on right now him and Josh Allen I think are going to be uh, two very exciting uh, first round picks that the Jaguars made on the defense and this team is still kind of trying to build that defense and um, with the addition of CJ Henderson and Chase on and uh, you know other draft uh, other acquisitions through the offseason such as Joe Schober um, how does this defense um, fare in 2020 in your eyes with these key new additions you think they I feel like Troy like, Herndon has a has a prove it year Trey Hunter has to prove it this year. He has to prove that he's worth to be on the team for the next few years. I'm not saying he has to be the best cornerback on the team. That's not going to happen. I don't think Trey Herndon has it in him to be like that. But he has to prove that he can be a somewhat solid and consistent number two cornerback behind C.J. Henderson because C.J. Henderson is going to start up. He's going to start. He's going to be the number one. He's going to be on the number one receiver at all times, all times. Trey Hunter has to do that. I think that's our only weakness besides our free safety and strong safety. We actually drafted a safety out of Auburn, Daniel Thomas. Watching him, he – this is going to sound crazy. You know, this is, this is a bull take from the last episode. He looks a lot like Earl Thomas to me. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying he's going to come out the gate in the next couple of years and beat Earl Thomas, but if we slowly develop him, I think Daniel Thomas has the ability to be a starter on offense, or offense. defense this year, maybe even next year, just depending on what Jared Wilson produces in, you know, OTAs, minicamp, and – the preseason, it's really going to be a, tri- a trial and error period for him. But Daniel Thomas, I love that pick. I-, I love that pick. I watched him in Auburn. I watched him, all the picks that, you know, extensively the Jaguars made. Daniel Thomas is one of my favorite picks of the draft. I think he's amazing. He, he let, he, there was poor coaching on the defense in Auburn, and that's why they kind of faltered this year. But, you know, I'm not saying Todd Wash is, you know, some god or some saint. No, he's, he's by far that. But I think that the defense that they're going to play – I think we're I think we're both in agreement they're going to play more of a three bridge, a three four hybrid if Yanni comes back and stuff like that. I just I love the Daniel Thomas pick. I think that he will start from week one. I think you won't, you won't have a choice because I don't think Jared Wilson is a very strong free safety, and I think Ronnie Harrison has a lot of growing to do. Other than that, it's really up to our cornerbacks. I think Jill Schobert. Um, it, I don't know if anyone watches or, or listens to. Um, Locked on Jaguars, but Tony Wiggins summed it up very perfectly. They said that the signing from Joe Sherbert when they did the lot when they did the crossover series to the Cleveland Browns, everyone loved him. When he did the crossover series to the Ravens, the Ravens wanted Joe Sherbert. That's a championship caliber defense. And if you want another player from the Browns like that, 
and a, and a championship caliber defense wants that player, that player has to have some meaning. And watching Joe Schobert, his only weakness is the run. But he can set other players up for success. He's very good at setting the defense, very good at setting everyone and putting them where they need to go. And Tony made a really good point by saying that. And watching Joe Schobert, he had a couple of games where he had double picks, just off tips and being in the right place at the right time. So I don't, I'm not expecting him to have four interceptions this year. That's a, that's a very high number for him. But if he can put our defense in the right place, I think our defense will be pretty – average of the pack, middle of the pack. You know, we might have some good games where we have good defense, but we have to stay healthy. We have to stay consistent. Joe Schober has to be at the eyes and ears of the defensive coordinator and has to make sure everyone's in the right place at the right time, making the right call out, the right audibles that needs to be. I love this defense. I don't think it's going to be a number five defense like we were a couple years ago in 2017, but I do think this defense has a lot to look forward to. I think this defense could be very productive. But on the low end, it could be very bad. It really just depends on, you know, the output of all of our team and whether Yannick and Gakwe comes back. There's going to be a lot of youth on this defense and a ton of talent that, you know, is yet to be recognized.